Hi, Facebook friends. Helen Arcantu here, CEO of the YWCA of Northern New Jersey. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm so happy to have some time with you today. Um, if you're in Northern New Jersey, it's a beautiful day, so much so that I brought my laptop outside so I could have this important conversation today. Um, and, you know, if you're, uh, you know, like many of us connected to the mission of the YW, um, we were watching the news carefully today. We heard some news last night about the status of Roe um, v. Wade that um, was very disconcerting and clearly uh, means that um, we've got some work to do and to mobilize um, to protect women's rights to their body, for sure, and privacy and so much more. So we will stay watching and stay on that. But today we're talking about another very important issue with a very very good friend of the YW, a good friend of mine, um, someone who, you know, we just should be so grateful for that she is in a place and a space where she can be um, making such important change and um, keeping an eye on areas that are of such need in our community. Um, we are talking again, uh, she's been with us before, with Commissioner Tracy Zur from the Bergen County commissioners and we're so glad she could be here to talk again about a, a conversation we've started with her before um unfortunately it's not a conversation that is ending it's just um uh you know more more to learn more to learn on it so with that welcome tracy i'm so happy that you could be with us today thank you helen so much for having me and, and thank you for drawing attention to this issue and you're a thousand percent right there is so much more to discuss on this topic because hunger hasn't gone away in our community. You know, th this it was here pre-pandemic. It expanded and exploded during the pandemic. And it's still at those really high levels in every single corner of our county. And so oh. bringing awareness to what is going on is definitely an important, important conversation, an important step. So. Well, we are we're going to jump right in. Before we do that, I want to make sure that we tell everyone a little bit about your background so that they understand why we're so grateful we have you, um, you know, as a leader here in our community. Um, Tracy uh, is, has launched, and we've talked about this before, in July of 2020, the Bergen County Food Security Task Force um, to address the growing rate of food insecurity and the impact that it continues to have on our local pantries and our community. Um, the food, uh, the Bergen County Food Security Task Force has been working to bring together key stakeholders to end hunger in Bergen County and has hosted meetings to discuss best practices for data collection, public and private outreach, and building a lasting infrastructure so that Bergen County is better equipped to meet the needs of its residents. And unfortunately, as Tracy just mentioned, those needs are still growing. Um, as for uh, our wonderful commissioner herself, she is a lifelong resident of Bergen County, and she has served as a commissioner now for nine years. As a commissioner, she has championed so many initiatives, but in particular, her passion um, has very much focused on um, food security, housing, employment programs for adults with unique abilities, um, mental health programs and the environment. And she has been such a significant champion for the LGBTQ plus community as well. We are so lucky to have her in our community working for us. She is such an advocate um, and so passionate. Um, and with that, she engages all of her colleagues around her to initiate policy and change um, in a very positive way in these areas. Um, prior to becoming a commissioner, she served as a municipal prosecutor in Hoboken, a judge in Bergen County Central Municipal Court, and the public defender to both Englewood and Woodcliffe Lake, handling municipal issues as well as criminal defense work. She also serves on the Jewish Federation of Northern New Jersey's Board of Trustees, as well as the Federation's Women Philanthropy Board and Executive Committee. Um, in 2017, she formed the nonprofit We the People, um, Embrace, Empower, Engage, Inc. It is dedicated to bringing together children from different backgrounds to work together on service projects in 2020. And I will say that she's also the recipient of our Racial Justice Award for the YWCA, specifically around the tremendous work that that effort has done to um, create racial 
understanding and promote racial justice in our communities. That's such a, a large commitment and joint commitment of both of ours um, as well. In 2020, as I started and shared, she did launch this Bergen County Food Security Task Force in response to the rising levels of hunger that we were seeing during the pandemic. Um, but what she learned is that this was a pre-pandemic issue and that it is an issue that will be staying with us for now. Um, so as a result, she has worked closely with the community to address the rising levels of hunger and to bolster services at our local food pantries. She was also um, recently appointed and congratulations to serve on the New Jersey Israel Commission and Sustainable Jersey's Organic Working Group. Well, we're so glad with all of that to have some time to spend with us. Because Holly, thank you, first of all, for that glowing, glowing intro, but more importantly, for your partnership every step of the way on so many of these issues that we're working to address here in the county. The, y, the YWCA has been an invaluable voice, and we are so grateful that we you know, get to collaborate and that this is something that we're all taking on together. So thank you. Well, we, we, we all know that when we link arms, we are stronger for sure. And this is an important issue. And, and you know, right prior to us going live, I, you know, for viewers, I want to say, I, you know, I said to Tracy recently, I, I had the opportunity to talk with um, uh, one of her team members, uh, Jean Johnson. And, you know, during that conversation, you know, um, which was just, you know, kind of planning, checking in, you know, ways we can work together and collaborate. She started talking about an aspect of your work. And as much as I thought I knew about your work, what she was started to talk about was foreign to me. And, you know, it just really occurred to me that here for someone like me, who is very active in the community and so connected to so many of these issues, who still found something to be new, shocking and surprising and, you know, different and new to learn, it occurred to me that we really need to you know, have another conversation and share some of the evolving pieces of this work, you know, with the community. So um, I'm grateful to your team. I know you have a wonderful team. I'm grateful to you that you could make the time. And, um, you know, for everyone who's joining us today to hear this conversation, because, you know, we are all in this together, as we've learned. And, um, you know, the more that we know, the more we can help for sure. And the only way that we're going to address hunger in our community is by exactly as you said, linking arms. You know, I think one of the things that most people don't realize is that this is a Burton County problem, that uh, they think that this is some other community's issue. They don't realize that their neighbors are struggling. We saw during the pandemic a 73% increase in food insecurity, which means we had about 103,000 folks in Bergen County, one of the wealthiest counties in the country, who did not have adequate access to food, did not know where their next meal was coming from. And those numbers haven't decreased. We don't have the newest data as of yet. We're working on collecting our most recent survey that we put out in the field. But each and every one of our pantries has been actually reporting an increase. We thought we'd hit this plateau. Uh, there had been a study in 2008 after the recession that showed the peak in food insecurity was two years after the, the recession began and did not subside for 10 years back to pre-recession levels. And so we were hopeful that we were at that peak. But what we're seeing now is that, that we're not there yet, that, that the increase Every single day, there are new families showing up who are dealing with food insecurity, and whether that's inflation issues or other, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the long coattails of economic challenge that the pandemic has brought, yes. uh, there is still so much need in our community. And unfortunately, so many people think that the problem's over. They think well, that they can now pivot. And, and Ukraine, we definitely we need to be generous in Ukraine, but it is definitely hurt the donation levels in our food pantries. And there is so much need and empty shelves and and simultaneously we're trying to change the conversation about what is a good food donation you know we can't expect to give out only pasta and spam and not expect to have diabetes and hypertension right. and so if we're going to try and shift you know the ultimate piece of social justice is that that access to healthy nutritional food that improves health outcomes absolutely so, you know you said so much there so let me break it apart for a minute and start with i think the the vision of who is utilizing these services, right? Let's start there. Um, because I think, um, you know, when you talk about those numbers, which are 
staggering when you think about Bergen County, right? I mean, everyone has this image of Bergen County being such a wealthy place and that, you know, sure, there may be pockets, right, is, you know, is what people say, but that, you know, we're not, you know, we're not an area in need. But when you hear those numbers, you know, it really, it does force you to step back and rethink that vision of who is in need and that there are so many of us and people that might be living right next door to you that exactly. on, on, you know, one hand look, you know, have a facade of one, one piece, but are struggling. And as you said, I mean, we are now dealing with, you know, the kind of the economic impact of the last few years of, of what this country has been through. And, um, you know, and here we are, here we are, and it's impacting everyone economically at every level. And you know, Helen, it is always there's always been, you know, challenges for food access for our seniors who are on yeah. fixed incomes, and there have always been accesses and pockets. I think what's astonishing, what most people don't realize, is that every single town, including Alpine and Franklin Lakes, and every single town has double digits of people who are receiving food stamps, uh, SNAP mm-hmm. benefits, and so to to understand that the problem has always been here. It has been more invisible. It's harder to see. Um, And I think, you know, this is going to be a problem and challenge that we have to kind of be ready for the marathon. And that is one of the commitments that the Food Security Task Force and the county executive, Jim Tedesco, uh, has really set forward for the utilization of some of the American Rescue Plan dollars. We just pushed out a, a grant to the community, to all the food pantries, where we awarded 47 different food pantries grants that will enable them to become more long-term sustainable. And what that means is refrigeration, freezers, computers, um, pallet jacks, whatever they might need, knocking down a wall, building shelves, making it so that they are equipped to handle the increased levels of service in the long term. And I'm so glad that you shared where that money is going, you know, so that people understand. I mean, I, I know very often you hear people say, oh, you know, government money is just being pushed out. Um, but it's it's going to, you know, really significant need in our community and and helping, you know, the person next door that you don't even realize need help, you know, by by putting that money into the pantries. And you've been on our show before and talked about kind of that infrastructure building that, you know, once, once you, you know, really put a spotlight on this area and looked at it, um, everyone historically had kind of been working in silos. Absolutely. And in addition to that, they didn't have the technology, um, whether it was from the refrigeration or from the data systems to be able to be connected to each other, to be able to share, you know, when there was excess, um, move around. And that's one of the things that I'm the most excited about that we yeah. accomplished with the Food Security Task Force is that interconnectivity, that building of community, that knowing that each other, they have places to turn for information, to tease out best practices. And we ran, one of the things we ran this year was a fundraising 101 for our food pantries, because most of them have never had to do that before. Yeah. They, you know, people would drop off cans at church and, and the seniors would sort them during the week and then give them out to folks in the community. Well, that whole model has changed and the needs are have far out surpassed the normal quantity of food that was getting donated. So how they continue to strive, how we equip them to kind of have those tools to meet this long term challenge is really what is so critical. Well, um, and I think that that is, you know, when I think about the work that this this group has done is really, you know, kind of the, the two tracks. I mean, you know, one of them is dealing with the immediate issue, but the, the building the infrastructure, giving them the skills to fundraise, giving them the skills to, you know, create the business offices to support what these, um, you know, these programs need, giving them the technology, teaching them how to use it, teaching them how to work, you know, as a coalition. I mean, that cannot be minimized. I mean, that is linking arms for sure. And that is where the power for us to be able to really move towards eradicating this issue and and really problem solving, you know, that next level will come from. And that technology piece really is so critical because the only way that, you know, we have a tapestry of social service programs in Bergen County, ways that people, the food, food insecurity is a symptom there is an underlying cause and how we address and equip our pantry directors to be ambassadors for those programs and connect their their clients to the services that they really need to lift themselves out of food insecurity that's going to be the 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 key if if we're going to really truly end hunger here in burton county it is so much more than just sticking food in a trunk it is really 
looking at the whole person, looking at tr trauma-informed care, making sure that we are dealing with each individual and that whatever door they enter through, that they can get connected holistically to the services that they need. Absolutely. And um, we have Nevair Balerian on um, watching saying what extraordinary work this is. And, you know, having her comment reminds me, though, the importance and one of the things that you've really worked on is really engaging our restaurant community. Um, Nevair is, uh, you know, we know is the owner of World Flats. Um, and, um, you know, she she as a as a restaurant owner, and this is what we need from other food service, you know, providers in our community is really understanding these issues so that they can manage, you know, any excess that they have as well and that they can work alongside because this really it's it's all of us together that are going to make an impact here. So yes, Nevaeh, extraordinary work, but it, it um, you know, it's all of our pieces snapping together, you know, like puzzle pieces to figure this out. And to realize that we're all stakeholders, meaning, you know, it, yes, the hospitals can play a part, yes. businesses can sponsor, civic organizations, our restaurants, everyone has a part to play as far as this is concerned. And a big part of that too is, as I said, is it's changing the idea of what is a good donation to our food pantries. We've, we've now equipped so many of them with refrigeration and freezer capacity so that they can take fresh fruit and vegetables and right. they can take things like onions or potatoes or, or oranges and apples and things that will actually help in you know, dairy and, and meat and all the things that will help make a healthy meal for individuals. And that's- Yeah, let, let's talk about that. I mean, that's actually how this conversation today started because, um, you know, Jean Johnson from your team had, had reached out and we were talking about educating um, our members about that piece, about what is a good donation, how they can help with the donations, because the donations are needed. The support is absolutely needed. Um, and not only is it needed, but it's, it's, it's exactly what you said earlier. It's not just that, you know expired can that you have in your pantry that you're trying to get rid of um, or thinking, well, someone else can use it because just because it's expired, it's still good, but it's, or, you know, a, you know, a box of pasta or, you know, something that's inexpensive off the shelves, but really thinking intentionally about what would you feed your family? Um, and not only feed your you know. family, I mean, one of the things that most people don't realize is that our pantries also disseminate things like diapers and, yes. um, and period products, all of which are super expensive that really are drains on so many people's budgets. And any dollars that are being spent in that direction are not going to the food budget. And so those kinds of needs are also so significant. Hygiene products, cleaning products, things of that sort that are not covered by food stamps, that are not yes. covered by WIC benefits. Those items are so critical for our food pantry partners. And, you know, I'm so glad that you said that. And that's what I, I just want to make sure now let's spend a little bit of time talking about what is a good donation because, you know, the old mindset was only food, right? And, but now, as you just noted, you know, there are a whole host of items that aren't covered by, you know, assistance that's out there, but yet we need them to survive. And, and how, how are, how are um, folks going to get them if we don't step up and step in? So, so let's talk about that. What is the reframe on what is the good donation and what is needed right now? What is needed? So, you know, I, first of all, I'm a big advocate of getting to know and develop a relationship with your local food pantry because each one is, is unique as, as the communities are. You know, there are some that have a very high senior population and for them, it's the low sodium products and it's healthy fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. and it might be adult diapers, whereas others may be serving a lot of families and, and have a huge need for formula or diapers or menstrual products or things of that sort. So I, I you know, but, but universally good donations are things that you would want to serve your family for dinner. Mm. So whether that, you know, and, and hearty vegetables are a wonderful thing for hearty fruit, things that will last a long time so that they could be st still fresh and delicious for those families to enjoy. Those are great food donations, whether that, as I said, whether that's a bag of carrots or whether that is a cabbage or whether that is a bag of apples. Those are the kinds of things that our food pantries are desperate for, you know, lemons, olive oil, um, things of those sorts that are healthier than than the normal kind of high sodium can product that they're used to receiving. And so that's so good to know. And two things come to mind. One is we're getting into that garden growing season here in New Jersey. And sometimes I know from the, the gardeners around me that they get overwhelmed with like 
a ton of zucchini or a ton of fill in the blank, whatever yeah. you're growing. And your pantry will take it happily. There's also an organization called Ample Harvest that helps connect you as well to the food pantries that need that need that too. I mean, it, the local gardener can be so impactful, and it's one of the the things that we're looking at expanding too is some of the community gardening programs to connecting the dots to to the food pantry so that when there is excess they can be the beneficiaries. So you mentioned that we should get to know our local food pantry and you talked a little bit about, you know, what what's on the list. Where can someone go to find that information if that so if they don't it know? It's so convenient because you have the website right on the screen right here. There it is. We actually have a map that you can click on whatever municipality and the food pantries that are there will pop up with the hours that they're open so that you can figure out when to go make that donation uh, or when you can access the food that you absolutely need as well. You know, the, the whole point is it's to be there for both the the client who is need, in need of the service, but also the donor who wants to support those who are struggling. So folks, um, and we have it on the screen, we're gonna put it in the comments as well so you can easily access it. I do encourage you to take a moment and to just check out what's happening in your community. Even if you're not ready to engage with them today, just know where they are, know what they need so you have it in your mind. Um, you know, we all know that we can do something to make this world a better place. This is an, this, um, is something that you can do and do very, very locally. So it's, it's, it's wonderful to be able to embrace it. And, you know, Tracy and her group has made it so easy to access the information by pulling it together um, through this website. So, you know, when Jean and I were talking, she started talking about something that, um, again, I had never heard the term before. I'm probably embarrassed to say. So it was new to me. Um, but it occurred to me since it was new to me that others may not know unless I've just been living under a rock, which is possible. But no, we not. talked about a food desert and she talked about the food deserts that we have in Bergen County. And, you know, I really had never heard that terminology. And then as we started to talk about where they were. You know, it was just really eye opening to me. And I actually, you know, got off talking to her and I ended up jumping on a call with Lori Murray from our team, who's our director of communications and marketing and said to her, we need to get them on soon to be talking about this because, you know, if I wasn't aware of this, I know others are not. And, and once again, you're, you're, you know, first of all, we have, you know, a Fair, Fairview is a food desert in Bergen right. County. And, and most people don't realize that. And what a food desert is, just by definition, is where there's not even adequate supermarkets where people can access food, uh, where they can get fresh fresh fruit and vegetables and things of that sort, where it's more urbanized and there's, you know, it's a, it's a little bodega rather than a large supermarket. There are two small supermarkets in Fairview, but there isn't a big shop, right? There isn't, uh, you know, a, a, the, so many of the chains that we're used to. And so increasing access and the ability, you know, it's like even if they, people had the money, they couldn't walk into the supermarket and necessarily yeah. access the healthy food that we're trying to put forward. And, and I think that's, you know, really so much of what our focus is, is understanding that, uh, that, that the food that we eat is so tied to our overall ability to succeed. You know, I, I always think of that, that Snickers commercial, you know, at three o'clock in the afternoon, you know, how our kids are able to focus, how mm -hmm. our kids are able to succeed academically. You know, we can talk about, you know, free community college, but if the kids not even to get there because they've, they've been at a, a deficit for so long, yeah. you know, that is, it, that that's an unachievable goal. And so the bottom line is we have to look at all of the aspects of this and make sure that these communities have access to the food that they need and the nutritional components that they need. Yeah. And I was actually, I knew we were talking today. I was thinking about it this morning. My kids were heading off to school to do state testing today. Um, you know, we're, we're, that's happening, you know, around us. And, you know, the teachers had sent a, an email saying, make sure they have a good breakfast, make sure they have a good snack, make sure they have a good lunch because they really need to be able to be focused and, you know, get some good rest and all of that. And, you know, when you think about these conversations of what we're talking about today and then start to like overlay them, you know, as you noted earlier, you know, about the, um, you know, uh, social justice and racial justice impact and equity impact around, you know, where this issue you know, uh, unfolds, um, you know, just think about the reverberation of that, you know, not being able to have that healthy meal and then having to go in and take that state test and then the ramifications of, you know, of that piece. So it's, it's just the, these, these, this all builds. Absolutely. And, you know, it, 
there's this thing called the community health improvement plan. It's the community. It's a, the hospitals have to get together every three years and assess what's going on with the community. And since I have been on this board, diabetes and obesity in minority and underserved communities has been identified as an issue. Yet we haven't attacked it head on, which is what we're doing now. Um, you know, the bottom line is that we, we want lifelong productivity. We want lifelong he good health and, and healthy outcomes for, for folks so they can succeed and thrive. And we're not going to have that unless we change what we're serving folks at our food pantries and making sure that there's access to that healthy food throughout our entire county. You know, one of the things that we're working on a project right now that I'm really excited about in Garfield, which is another community that has definitively struggled, where we're partnering with, a, we're going to have a food pantry, uh, mental health, Bergen Volunteer Medical Initiative, the, the town health department, and the town social worker all under one roof. Amazing. It's all interconnected. And yeah. so to understand that interconnectivity is really what is so critical. It's the solution. That's the only way we're going to solve these problems. Absolutely. You know, creating a, you know, I, that, that's one of the things to be able to help people get access to all the supports that they need to, um, you know, for that equitable life that we are trying to create for all is, is so key. And so, um, uh, you know, next level, you know, thinking and so grateful that our leaders here in the county um, are, um, you know, putting the energy and the funding um, into uh, these opportunities so that we can really make an impact here. Paul, Tracy one other thing I want to touch on too is the need for volunteers. You know, so many of the seniors were the key volunteer population for so many of these food yeah. pantries prior to the pandemic. And I'm hearing throughout the system of food pantries that there's a need for folks to, to come back and pitch in and help. And what, that's not just donating. That's also being present for the, for the unpacking and the packing and the sorting and the, the organizational skills. If you have computer talents, many of these food pantries are run by folks who are not the most technologically savvy and can use right. their talents. Marketing, any of these things that are going to help get the word out for your into your community are really where the energy and passion is necessary. So, and, and think about, you know, also for those of you that are connected to groups, um, you know, whether it's Girl Scouts, whether it's Boy Scouts, you know, whether it's some, you know, service group that you're connected to, it's an opportunity for you to mobilize and give back. Um, by connecting with the task force and seeing where that volunteer need is and, you know, putting your efforts and time into projects where you can help these local pantries um, have the extra set of hands that they need, in addition to collecting the food, the donations, um, other than food, the funding, you know, all of these pieces together are needed. So, um, so glad that you said that. And again, I just want to make sure that everyone is noting that we have in the comments the website that you can go to. Um, everything we're talking about today, um, you know, there is a link for information um, for opportunities, whether it's something that you would like to give back or whether you are in need. Um, there's information there for you. So please access it. Um, you know, Tracy and her entire team are so committed and focused, um, laser focused really on this effort and, you know, ways to be able to continue to make positive impact here. So, they are waiting to serve um, and so grateful again that we have you all in the community. Before we leave each other, Tracy, any any last comments? I know we've given so much information and I know there's going to be more. We'll be doing have this conversation again for sure um, as you continue to evolve the work that you're doing. But what else can we leave our folks with today? You know, I will certainly have more updates. We are having our, our second food security summit on May 13th and we're going to be, you know, touching base with all the food pantries in a real um granular way to make sure that we're meeting their needs going forward. But we really are committed here in this county and, and this administration to making sure that we're tackling this issue of hunger uh, in our community from every angle. Um, if you want to join us, please feel free to shoot me an email. We are happy for the energy and, and ideas and thought processes of ways that we can improve. And we're also happy to connect you to where you can be impactful in your local community as well. All right, folks, you heard it. And, uh, you know, part of your charge is not only to mobilize yourself, but, you know, take something you learned today and share it with someone else in your life, integrate it into a conversation, take this broadcast and send it to somebody via messenger or a text, copy and paste the link. Um, you know, you're part of the solution here. You're part of getting the word out and engaging our community 
and there's so much to do. And again, this is a really, really local need and something that you can feel really good about the impact you're having. And it's something that, you know, we can pass to our younger generations if they're involved in service groups that they can get in, engaged from a young age to understanding um, these complex issues that are and around it's something us. something our kids really do understand and really can be, uh, you know, har harnessing their energy as well to be part of the, the solution. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we encourage you all to embrace that. And for us, um, we uh, encourage you to stay connected to YWTV. There'll be more conversations about important issues like this um, for the YW. We hope you uh, those of you that can benefit tomorrow night, join us. Our next chapter speaker series is talking about real world strategies to promote yourself in the job market. And it's free of charge, 530 tomorrow evening online. Um, so you can do it from wherever you are at that hour. And uh, you just have to register. We'll have the link here for you. We also have an open house for our summer camp. It is that season again, as we're sitting out in the nice weather today, it is a good reminder that it's coming. And I know we all want our kids to be, um, you know, engaged and active and you know, getting really back to that, you know, social interaction and outdoor fun, but to be safe so that we don't have to be worried about them. So please consider the YW camps. We have one in Mawa and one in Dumont, and our team is ready to serve you. Um, and last but not least, I do want to mention two other quick events on um, May 10th through June 21st. Our um, series about STEM girls program is kicking off Friday, um, Tuesdays from 4 to 5 p.m. free of charge thanks to Google and it's via Zoom. So we hope that um, your girls can join and then from there there will be some in-person activities that are planned. Um, and on May 12th, uh, just um, kind of uh, at the tail end of Mother's Day to um, provide some self-care opportunity for our moms. Um, join us from 12 to 1 p.m. on Thursday for a free event for our moms. So much always happening at the YW. Stay linked to us through our social media and stay linked to the Bergen County Food Security Task Force through the website and through, um, you know, checking in. You can join their Facebook page. You can join their social media. You can stay connected to um, Tracy and her great team and the work that they're doing. And um, thank you again for making the time to get Tracy to educate us all on this, uh, where where everything is evolving to and, and how we can help. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Everyone have a great day. Be well. Bye-bye.